Howard Donahue's 25-year quest to expose the truth inspires Colin McLaren to investigate this famous murder mystery and prove Donahue's remarkable theory. Both men agree that the third shot that hit Kennedy was the result of a tragic accident. I really believe this is what happened. Three shots are fired. The first is by Lee Harvey Oswald. It misses, but a ricocheting fragment of the bullet hits the president, causing him to say, my God, I'm hit. At the sound of gunfire, Agent George Hickey turns to look up at the sixth floor window. Oswald fires again. The second bullet enters the president's back and exits his neck, hurtling forward into Governor Connolly's back and exiting through his chest. Hickey picks up the AR-15 to return fire and flicks off the safety. As the follow-up car lunges forward, he loses his balance and accidentally pulls the trigger. The presidential car is rushed to Parkland Hospital, and a massive cover-up begins. This forensically constructed account has long been supported by previously ignored eyewitness statements. I saw the president grab his chest and fall forward. And I think I saw a few men in plain clothes shooting back. After the first shot, the Secret Service man raised up in the seat with a machine gun. Both Donahue and McLaren find that 11 people are able to put the assault rifle in George Hickey's hands at or before the time of the third shot. Seven of the 11 are Hickey's fellow Secret Service agents. McLaren and Donahue also identify 10 people who testify that they smelt gunpowder at street level, at or around the time of the shooting. You don't smell gunpowder unless you're upwind of it, and it blows in your face. To McLaren, the behavior of the Secret Service agents at Parkland Hospital is evidence they knew one of their agents shot JFK. Documented accounts of physical and verbal threats and the determination to prevent an immediate autopsy, despite the law, speak to a cover-up. Well, either you move, or we run it over you. The autopsy in Bethesda, Maryland, is also suspicious to McLaren. Mind your own business. Overcrowding in the room, the Secret Service's constant interference, the pressure cooker autopsy, lost photographs, falsified x-rays, and the missing brain of one of the most famous men in history, all point to conspiracy. Uh, we talked about it to anybody at all. Well, we'd be court-martialed. Finally, there's the Warren Commission itself, with its unsummoned witnesses, unheard testimonies, unanswered questions, and unpresented evidence. Colin McLaren believes the Warren Commission had their shooter conveniently dead, they had their murder weapon. They had a plausible forensic account of a three-bullet assassination. Case closed. George Hickey never takes the stand to be cross-examined about his statement. He never speaks publicly about the assassination. He dies in 2005. I think if my father could see George Hickey now and say something, he would say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what happened to you. He arrived at this conclusion through facts, evidence, and just his, his knowledge of ballistics. And unfortunately, it led to Mr. Hickey, but it was never his intention to uh, paint him as a bad guy or disparage him in any way. And he had great sympathy for Mr. Hickey. It's tragic that John Kennedy's life had to end in that way. And in a way, it's almost like he's continued to die through the years because he just hasn't been able to, uh, to rest in peace. And I would, for his sake, because I admired him very much, for his sake, I would like to be able to see this thing resolved once and for all, and put, put to rest. Understanding the real cause into the death of JFK isn't about blackening the name of any individual or organisation. It's about the truth and supplying a definitive answer to the American people. An answer no more complex than a tragic accident colliding with a foolhardy assassination attempt. Maybe it's time to see the smoking gun and then to quietly close the door behind 
history's most talked about and debated crime scene.